Let's explore using the Blackmagic Studio Camera 4K Plus and Pro with the 8cent Mini. So stay tuned for camera control, SDI workflows, tally and tips for color correction. Just a quick heads up, Blackmagic did send these cameras over to the channel to take a look at, make some videos about and then send back once we're done. I'm going to grab my 8cent Mini and we'll kick things off with the Plus model of the cameras because it's a bit easier to set up. I've got my A10 Mini Pro here and I can simply connect the camera via HDMI into the A10 Mini. I'll head into the A10 software control and make one change to make sure everything works as I expect it to. In the preferences and mapping settings, I'll tell the A10 software control that the camera I'm using is a studio 4K camera. And just like that, I can already see that the red tally shows up when the camera's on program, green whenever the camera's on preview, and off whenever it's not previewed or live. I also have full control over how the image on this camera looks, so I can open up the camera tab in the ATEM software control. Any changes I make in here are reflected on the camera. So as I play around with the lift, gamma and gain, the camera's output is being adjusted in real time. This super simple plug it in and shade the camera workflow means it makes a lot of sense to grab these Blackmagic cameras when you already have Blackmagic ATEMs on hand. Keep in mind at this point is I'm using a pretty short HDMI cable in this demo and in the past videos I've never really recommended using HDMI cables over 5 meters. Well it turns out this is not really true anymore and Photo Joseph has made a video on longer HDMI cables and some other options you might have. And you can check that video out in the description below. I could grab the Pro camera and recreate the same workflow with HDMI out into the ATEM but it has the added benefit of having SDI in and out which comes in really handy. To work with the HDMI based 8 Mini lineup, I do need to grab one of these 3G bi-directional converters from Blackmagic. I want to get a video signal from the camera to the 8 and for that I use the SDI output on the camera and connect that to the SDI input on the 3G converter. Then a HDMI cable is added between the HDMI output of the converter and into the 8 Mini. So now I'm passing my video signal from the camera to the 8 and going through the converter. But you might notice something already, there's no tally showing up whenever the camera goes on program. This is because the SDI workflow in this case is not bi-directional. I'll need another cable to pass signals back to the camera again. And that's why we need this 3G bi-directional converter, because the SDI output it has can be connected back to the SDI input on the camera. So now that I have everything connected, I can open up the ATEM software control again and just make sure this camera is set up for a Studio 4K camera. And now I'm passing camera control and tally information back to the camera. On the 4K Pro camera, there is a PGM or program button. And if you press that, the return program feed coming over SDI will show on the screen. Now, as you can see here, nothing's showing up when I press the button. And that's because I'm not sending back a video signal. I can send back a video signal by adding any video source to the HDMI input on the bidirectional converter. So we have our cameras set up, but we want to dig in a little bit deeper on the color correction part. Now, if you have an ATEM Mini Extreme, you could actually use the buttons on the front to do some of this color correction. These buttons may be useful sometimes for certain situations, but I'd rather open up the ATEM software control where I have a few more options. And while we're in the ATEM software control, there's a pretty nice feature that's sort of hidden and it's really useful for color correction. I will continue using the ATEM Mini Extreme from this point because it has two HDMI outputs and those are really useful for this next tip. I have my multi-view on my HDMI output number one, but over on the ATEM software control, I'll set up output two as this, use output two for camera control monitoring. When I connect a monitor up to my HDMI output number two now, I get a really fast way to see which camera source I'm correcting. Just for this demo, I've set output number two up for multi-view as well. But as soon as I make a change on the camera tab, you can see that output two automatically switches to that camera to give me a preview of what I'm doing. Keep in mind I'm not pressing any buttons to change that output. As soon as I start playing with any sort of setting in the camera control options, it automatically switches to that camera. So if I'm done correcting camera number one, and then I switch to camera number two, you can see the output switches to that camera as well. You can be confident that this is not changing your program output or your recording or your streaming output, but if you are gonna record one of your HDMI outputs to an external recorder, be sure to turn off this setting for that output. This can be done on other ATEM Minis as well. For example, on the ATEM Mini Pro, you can set this up, but for my use case, I like to use the HDMI output as a multi-view, and I wouldn't wanna get taken over by this camera control. So I hope you find that useful. I think you'll find that these cameras and these ATEMs talk so nicely together that it's really hard not to buy into both of them and sort of stay within that ecosystem. It makes a lot of sense, I think. Hopefully in the future, I'll cover more things like talkback and other features that the cameras have as well. But until then, thanks so much for watching and let me know in the comments if you think I missed anything. Bye-bye.